Nakona baseball gloves cost anywhere between 380 and 600 bucks. Plus they have models that go from a thousand to $2,000. It's crazy. Even though Nakona's really expensive, they're still really popular. And they have a super loyal fan base. We're using these three Nakona gloves to look at the company in general. They have a weird background in the glove world, so it's gonna take some explaining, but stick with me, it's worth it. This here's 11 and a half inches. It's American Kip, obviously a little bit of a red, white, and blue theme. We're actually using the Will Taylor pitching machine strategy. AKA, he just does no mallet work whatsoever, and I love it. Lately he has though, lately he has. Speaking of Will, he actually ends up in this video, so stay tuned. Some good poppage though. Doinkage. Oh, that was good. Gosh, these Nakonas come so stiff, but then they soften up like pretty quickly. Yeah, this glove just doesn't have, just doesn't have like a natural shape. Like we're kind of shaping it right now. Two in the pinky, by the way. I don't know if I said that. I've had very few that actually stick the pocket. Right now it's all still just kind of doinkage, all slipping up. I will tell you when I get one to stick in the actual pocket. That was close, that wasn't there yet though. Man, it's all coming up to the web. There, that was pocket. I think that was our first ball that was actually in the pocket. But holy sh I wonder how much uh, like more comfortable, I, comfortable I'd be if I had a cup on or if it would still just be just as scary. That sounded good. Change the angle of the camera so I can sit like this. Yeah, we're getting there. I mean, this thing's feeling a lot better. I will say, because of there being no mallet work, the only parts of the glove that are actually broken in are just kind of where I close and where the ball is hitting. I flinched for some reason. That, that's good pop. Some of these are really good, and then some of them are silent. Boom. Definitely feels solid, but uh, like I said, the only parts of the glove that are broken in are where you squeeze and then also where the ball is hitting. Everything else is like still pretty dang hard. All right, guys, heat test, Edge X plus the Shark glove. Both of these are running like $1,000. Hang on, I just want to say something. This glove has like a very distinct pocket you don't get rung up, but it's also not like high up here in like the top of the finger. Like I still have feel for it, but it's not destroying my finger. And I'm wearing a traditional. Those are all very good things. The American Kip is definitely on the softer side. Yeah, that's actually like really big fan of the shape. That's just playing catch. We'll have to like maybe take some ground balls of this thing because that's a really good head start. When I first got this glove in, I like could not get this thing to go to in the pinky. It was very, very tight to begin with, but just naturally as it's broken in now, you can just slide it in without even thinking about it. So let's go. Two in the pinky. That one like hesitated. Yeah, I mean, it feels really solid too in the pinky as well. It's not like you can wear it one way, not the other. Softer than I would typically like, especially considering I haven't had this very long. A lot of you guys out there enjoy the softer feel, so that's for you to decide. Nakona Edge X, we talked a little bit before about the gloves being soft. This one's definitely pretty soft, so we'll see how this goes. Pretty soft so far. Yeah, so that's kind of a little bit of what I'm talking about here. A little bit of that slingage going on. Not a huge fan of that. I've said it, I'm not a huge, huge fan of American Kip. It's kind of soft, slash like slightly stretchy. With that being said, this wasn't so much of a problem and this also has American Kip. I think maybe some of this stems from just the Edge X design. I think that this glove would benefit from being a little bit tighter all around. Like if it was tighter on the actual hand, this thing just can like, fly off it's pretty dang loose and then with that it's just allowing a little bit more flex in the entire glove tighten a few screws on this thing and it might be just a little bit better two in the pinky edge x you can't feel that like at all 
Wow, that's that's actually pretty weird. That doesn't feel like anything else I've ever caught with before. Yeah, Nakona, I love this like EdgeX design. I would say if you can find ways to tighten it up, that could be huge. There's just a lot of flex going on throughout the entire glove, not just the web, not just the laces, just the entire thing. Like I want you guys to see this. If I just kind of gently push back on the glove, look how this kind of like caves in backwards. Just the entire glove can move quite a lot. Quick note, Nakona does a really good job with designs. This thing's pretty average, but their designs lately are just killing it because they're different. Like they have their own style. Like I'm just, I'm a big fan. That's what more glove companies need to do. You know, be your own thing, figure out your style. You have to give that to Nakona. They're definitely doing that. All three gloves that we have here, the majority of the glove, like the palm, is American Kip. It comes really, really stiff, but once it is broken in, it's really not that stiff. It's pretty soft. A lot of youth guys I know are a really big fan of this stuff. So that's good. Question is, can we use this for elite baseball? When the ball's getting hit 100 plus, you can't afford to let it get bullied. With that being said, our main focus is just the pattern of this glove. Cause this is like their current updated pattern for 11 and a half inches. The Edge X is just a completely different take on a baseball glove. It almost feels like it's kind of inside out. My goal is to just have a couple little things that could be better about it because there's no way it's just perfect right now. This is so new. Ah, you gotta hate that. We hate to see it, gentlemen, but look it. This is the biggest weakness of the iWeb, part of why I'm not a huge fan. The combination of this like kind of soft slash stretchy leather. The laces aren't the worst thing in the world. The laces are actually really solid. I don't even have to squeeze the ball, you guys. Look at that. People love the iWeb, and I've always been a little bit against it. I've had my fair share of balls that go through the iWeb in that exact spot. I especially think this with anything that is meant for youth, because it's just softer slash stretchier leather. Why use an iWeb? It's just not worth the risk. Just to be clear, I did not try to catch the ball like that. It just happened. Um, we're going to take a few more. Hopefully, we don't see that again. So like we can prevent a little bit of that by just tightening up our web, but the idea is that we just shouldn't have to see that happen in the first place. Oh my gosh. That almost went through. I just try, I'm trying to catch the ball on normal. I was about to tell you to stop though, cause I was gonna make a comment and then that, I mean, that's bad. That is bad. That's not good. Like I said, if we tighten things up on this glove, <sighs> it's not just how the laces are tightened up. I just mean like the entire thing needs to be tighter. Fingers shouldn't be as wide. Just that is like, gosh. If that was like literally one mile per hour faster, it would have come all the way up. We know Nakona is not going to be happy seeing that, but also it's super easy to fix. One, us tightening up the web, very possible. The second option is them working on the actual sizes of their web plus this stuff over here, the type of leather they're using to make it so it's not as stretchy. Man, that really sucks. I'm going to tighten up the web as much as I can and see, you know, what kind of problems are we having still? There's just no way. Like if something goes through, it is because the leather itself is too soft. It's not anything to do with lace. At this point, I am going to intentionally try to catch it up top on the finger there so that it hits that web. That was just perfectly in the pocket. <laughs> It didn't go through, but it's not looking good, you guys. We've already talked about it, but I think this is just a little bit of proof that a change in leather might make a huge difference. The American Kip just has a little bit too much stretch to it. We also gotta take this with a grain of salt because this is the Edge X. If it was happening on like one of our normal Nakona models, I would say that's a bigger problem. Uh, you could all say this is a bigger problem because this glove costs like $1,200, but my point is, this is new technology. They know they're trying to constantly improve it. So hopefully they just take some uh, good notes from this video. That one didn't go through, but it was bulging for sure. All right, that was major improvement. One got stuck. That's still not good. One was a little bit of a bulge where it definitely went up and in for like a split second. Tightening up was obviously effective. We hate to see it. Just want to be very clear. This is not spitting the ball out hard at all. Oh, let me show you. All right, go ahead. 64, 61, 63. You guys, that's really slow. I mean, it doesn't take a lot of heat to like test and see how good a glove is. And we're just catching balls at 60 miles an hour. 
and it's coming through the web. That's not good. After really considering how fast the pitching machine's going, it, it honestly, it just makes the situation a little bit worse for Nakona. I'm about to explain a lot and I just need you guys to listen if you wanna fully understand Nakona baseball gloves. I'd make the claim that Nakona is like advancing their gloves faster than anybody right now, but part of that is because they have a bad history. You guys probably remember the typical Nakona glove. Walnut series, just very floppy, loose, uh, awkward, just a weird shape in general. Pretty bad glove to be honest. So then they decided they need to fix it and that's where this comes in. They started making gloves with like different leathers, higher quality leathers, better laces. They made the logo a little bit different and it looks cooler. But the problem is 90% of their gloves had this really goofy shape still. Like when we had this before it was broken in at all, which it still really isn't fully broken in. No mold to it, no shape to it. It was just starting from scratch. So that might sound like a good thing, but it's really not. So my point is, this is in the middle ground where Nakona was starting to get better. Now this glove here represents modern Nakona. And I gotta say, the pattern is pretty dang clean. It's American Kip leather. It has actual real shark leather on the back, which is cool, but you guys just don't need to care about that. This is the direction that Nakona is heading and it's actually a pretty good one. As of now, I have nothing bad to say about the actual shape of this, which is great. That's an incredible jump for Nakona. I know they sell super well, even though they're expensive. Some of that probably has to do with the fact that they're American made. I agree, that's really cool. There's this weird divide. A lot of people say you need stiff hard leather for a glove to be good. But the biggest critique from all these companies is that their gloves are too stiff. Right now, every glove company across the board is consistently making their gloves soft. Whether that's good or bad is a topic for another day, but I'd say that that's something we're seeing here. This is gonna get confusing, but listen up. This is not a Nakona, but this is one of my favorite gloves that I own, like period, I love it. It's a very, very high quality, nice glove. The guy who made this glove is now the guy in charge of making Nakona gloves, and he's the reason they're improving so dang much lately. In a year and a half, maybe two years from now, we're gonna see a huge jump up in Nakona gloves, and I genuinely believe they're gonna be competing with like Wilson Rawlings Mizuno. They're just always gonna be more expensive. Which leads me to the next point. Their gloves are strictly made in the USA. It used to be like some gloves were made in the USA, some weren't. From my understanding, everything's USA. That's incredible. That's also really expensive for them. And that's why we have things like this that cost 1,250 bucks. Also, they named this glove Kingpin and that's just really cool. This is nowhere near perfect, but it is incredibly cool. And from my understanding, they actually sell pretty dang well, even though they're crazy expensive. I just wanna say, Nakona, please listen to any critiques we have on this thing, because I do think it's really cool. And I think there is a place for it in the baseball world. It's just not like fully complete yet. That was a ton of talking, but just to kind of recap, this represents Nakona's past. This is current Nakona. This is them being crazy, having fun, and pushing the glove world forward. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you know the man. We have Will Taylor here. Will's actually been rocking a few Nakonas lately. Will, first things first, are you rocking that in-game ever? Is this gonna be on YouTube? This is gonna be on YouTube. <laughs> am I gonna game this ever? Am I getting it for free or am I buying it? That's such a good question. <laughs> if I'm get, if this just appears on my hand, poof, yes. out of thin air, this is sick. Freaking Chris broke it in so well. Uh, drippy as can be. I don't know what animal that is, but it's not a cow. <laughs> it's actually a giraffe. Yeah, oh my god. It is. If I got this for free, I would probably game this over just about anything. There's like a swag factor taken in, right? 100%. It's like me wearing Jordan 1s for a basketball game over Hyperdunks or whatever Yeah, kids absolutely. Wear. Yeah. <laughs> whatever it is. What's this? Is that Gator? Yeah, that's Gator. It's this like is probably like an expensive edge. It's probably like even more than normal. Yeah, some of them run up like 2K. This oh one's like 1250 or something like that. It's called a uh, Kingpin which is awesome. They give them names. That's like, I love that. Well, I could buy like a used Corolla for that price. Nakona has like a lot of options for leather and that's kind of to a fault in some ways because it makes it hard to buy, if that makes sense. So in your opinion, what's the best leather option from Nakona to actually game? Yeah, it's it's a Japanese casket in my opinion. If you're like an older kid, the Japanese leather is like pro preferred, hard, hard leather. Do you know what this leather is? Um, no chance? It's, it's American kid. Yeah. So. I think the Japanese leather is the best one they offer. It's just so expensive, bro. Yes. Typically, you're going to find that in custom, not stock, which is bumping that price up even more. Last question. This is actually we're leaving the Kona. You just started a glove company. What do you think the glove industry needs? Or maybe I could say, what is the glove industry doing poorly right now? I would probably go a similar route to what 44 Pro or what String King is doing with bats. A bare bones, not too flashy glove for as cheap as possible while still pulling some kind of profit margin it's for the people that's for, for that's people. what those brands are doing yeah. is it makes you feel like all right these guys are in it for me well hey thank you appreciate it man of course bro. um Absolutely. 
You guys know them. It's Bat Bros. You're already watching them. But if you're not, you're dumb. So go watch them. All right, we're going to do the hop test. But I just want to point out, Sarna, once again, is our friend here. We want to condition these gloves, but we're also having the problem with them being too soft. That's why we got this bad boy right here. This leather honestly all feels really good. Like, it feels nice and healthy. But I'm trying to stay ahead of the game. I don't want it to feel dry. For gloves like these, that's huge. Also, something else. You can use them for batting gloves. Let's actually go do that. small bonus of having Sarna, it works really well for your batting gloves because there's not really an oil in there to make them uh, slick or anything like that. It's basically keeping that palm leather healthy without softening it up. If your batting gloves are getting crusty, I even go to the point of putting them on the inside of the hand as well. Don't overthink it. That's not something you need to do a lot. It'll just help them out a little bit. Bottom of the ninth, base is loaded. Down by three. Fly out to center field, we lose. So for now, we're kind of just ignoring the blue glove. We don't really care about it at this point because it's just like an old Nakona model. We're gonna focus on these. What kind of feel does the Edge X have? And then this is Nakona's like 11 and a half inch pattern. So we're paying a lot of attention to this. It definitely feels like I'm able to easily catch the ball two different ways. One is like I'm truly holding it on like easy ground balls. And then the other way is letting it hit the pocket, even a little bit of the web, maybe on backhands and certain things like that. With that being said, the glove feels just like slightly thick, not a huge downside, just kind of a takeaway. The feel and thickness are extremely similar here because they have like the same palm leather. The Edge X just doesn't have like a shape to it. It like, it just moves in like every which way. Does that make sense? But like moves too much. There's a lot of lag. Does that make sense? I feel like that makes sense. The glove has lag like that. Here. It's not the same. There's not that same like lag. When I move the glove, the glove actually moves with me. Time for GBs, baby. I have some pretty high hopes for our shark glove. Like I said, you guys, this is the pattern that Nikona is gonna start using for like the typical 11 and a half inch glove. We'll start with the Edge X just to see, I don't know if it's still gonna be a problem. How'd that come out? So like that's two doinkages. Man, it really, really gets bullied. Oh my gosh, man. That's another one. I wasn't willing to catch that like with the web. I made sure to go palm. I think this could just be adjusted slightly. I'm gonna slow transfers down because I just want like I want to see the glove perform. I just like it looks pretty ugly. So this is doinkage, just to be clear. This is hitting palm and then shooting up. The glove has such odd flex to it. The whole palm kind of squeezes shut like that, like a little kid style, you know rather than it just being like just our two hinges or just our one hinge. Like, it just kind of lacks a shape, a mold. I love everything about the Edge X. It just needs to get better. Hit a couple harder right here, and then I think we're just gonna move on. <laughs> just a ripped single. Dude, doinkage, uh, that's annoying. Like I can't stand behind the shape of the glove. It's just not there yet. They need to keep cracking down on it because I, I just, uh, I love where they're going with the glove. All right, the Nakona G series, once again, yes, this is shark back here, but all we care about is like the shape and the pattern and how it plays. Not necessarily what the leather feels like because you guys probably shouldn't buy an $1,000 glove. for the sake of having a slightly better angle. Gosh, third time I had to adjust this thing. I'm getting bad at my job. So 
so much more confidence. I don't really have to think about this thing. I can just trust that I put my glove there. Yeah, I mean, this one feels good. I try to go between the legs, why I do that? There is so much more confidence with this pattern here. Even with, like I said, it has, yes, a softer feel to it, but I think it's just to the point of like preference. It's really not getting like horribly bullied. I do have one critique for Nakona. I'll share that in just a second. Let's take some more. Oh, that was just a bad approach. Ooh, snow cone. All right, taking a few two in the pinky here. I do gotta say, I gotta get better at knowing how, more quickly deciding to step up or step back. I take a lot of those in the middle. I tried stepping up. Man, I really like this both two in the pinky and traditional. Like, when you go two in the pinky, it often adds like a little boost in confidence just because it feels so comfortable. It just adds like a little boost of confidence. Uh, if you like wearing the glove two in the pinky, that is. Because it feels like you have more control of moving the glove. And that's exactly how I feel. I feel like I still have a decent amount of feel for the ball. Like I seriously feel confident both ways with this glove. Wow. Now, like I said, Nikona, I have a thing I wanna share. To explain this, we're using a few samples. I've talked about gloves getting bullied in the past, and what that really is and what that looks like is whenever you catch a ball, even just a little bit above the pocket, gloves that are getting bullied are coming backwards like this a lot. I'll show you by pushing in on our index finger, but when the glove gets bullied, it's pushing backwards right here. Do you see where that leather is scrunching up from me pushing? And then same thing with our Wilson here. Let me show you. It starts to bend backwards just a little bit as we push on that index finger. When we pull out the Nakona, we're also wearing it traditional. This is where our problem is. It really, it doesn't take a lot. You just kind of push on it and it caves in. Let me show you the edge X. Boom, traditional, pushing in on it. This one is like pretty extreme. This is what I'm talking about when gloves are getting bullied. And right now, Nakona has a small problem with that. It's not major, but it's something to take away. Nakona, hopefully you guys can fix it. Just to clarify, both of these gloves have been used a lot more than our Nakonas. This isn't like some unfair comparison. You get the point. 